Hello and welcome to iNerdius and my Writer's Tears playlist. Rather than describe the kinds of videos I'm going to do for this playlist, I thought I would just dive in with the first video and talk about a rejection that a co-writer and I got for a screenplay that we submitted to somebody. That somebody was producer Hugh Wilson, who was known for creating the TV show WKRP in Cincinnati, the First Wives Club series, and the Police Academy series. One of the reasons we sent the screenplay to Hugh Wilson was that my co-writer belonged to the same fraternity as Hugh Wilson and sent him a letter asking if he would be willing to read the screenplay and signed it Brother in the Bond below his name, which I guess meant that Hugh Wilson had to read the screenplay or something. Not really sure, but it worked. He said to go ahead and send it. We sent the screenplay. And this is what we got back, and then I'll tell you what the screenplay was about. Gentlemen, you have definitely sent your screenplay to the wrong guy. I hate slasher movies. I think they are dehumanizing junk, even when technically well done. And I think that steadily escalating brutality in these films speaks poorly for our society. I grant you, Police Academy 1 was no more than bubblegum for the eyes, but it was vaguely reaffirming in its own dumb sort of way. So I really can't tell you much about your movie because when axed heads are urinated on, I can read no more. I do fluffy comedies where the worst thing that happens is a couple of gunshots get fired. Maybe you can get your script to people who do this sort of thing. You'll have a sale, perhaps a hit. I don't know, and I don't know any of those people. I don't mean to sound so self-righteous about this, but I despise this sort of stuff. And you can see, signed, E. Wilson at Columbia Pictures Entertainment is part of Columbia Pictures Television. And we should have expected this response. Obviously, we knew who he was. We knew the kinds of movies that he made and the TV shows that he was involved with. And we knew he was the wrong audience for our script. But at the time, it was the only surefire way we had to get a script read by somebody. The script in question was called, at the time, it was called Splatter Day. The storyline for Splatter Day was about a group of college students who are big time fans of horror and true life murders and things like that, and wind up going on a killing spree and record it with the idea of doing something with the video and wind up getting betrayed by the leader of their group and they all each get killed. And the leader of the group, you find out later on, has a death wish and he wants to go down in a hail of bullets, suicide by police basically, and is just using his friends to make that happen in a way that will, you know, be huge essentially. And yeah, it was very dark. There were comedic bits. I mean, it was a dark comedy. We were kind of inspired by the movie Heathers, and we decided to go even darker with it, um, a lot darker. The severed heads thing, yeah, that was in the script. We thought it was kind of funny at the time. Again, we were going for dark. One of the supposed killers has a chainsaw, but it's an electric chainsaw, and somebody just unplugs it, you know, to keep them from killing people. Um, and so it was little things like that. I think a lot has come out since then that has been a lot darker and a lot more violent. So I don't even know that our script would get anybody riled up anymore these days. Later on, we had another producer, and I won't say who it is because I think he's still kicking around and doing things, who was very interested in the script and wanted us to change the title. And we changed the title to The Killing Club and made a few small adjustments to the story, but nothing major. And that person got caught up in, in a legal battle over a movie that he had finished, but which the producers or financiers or something opted not to release. And so he wound up in court trying to get the rights to his movie so he could have it released. And I think it did eventually get released, at least on video. But, you know, this was 
this is one of those examples of of a rejection that you know it didn't really hurt we knew we knew that we were probably not going to get in with this guy and i can't blame him for writing that letter i'm glad i saved it all these years it didn't really bother me at the time i thought it was highly amusing and so that's one of the reasons i kept it and it's just an example of the kinds of things I want to talk about on this playlist, the Writer's Tears playlist. Rejections, that's part of the deal if you're a writer. You have to develop a thick skin. You can't let them get you down. Although, you know, if you get enough of them in a row and you don't have sales to give you that positive affirmation that might help every now and then, yeah, it can be difficult. But it's kind of what you sign up for. So there you have it. My first writer's tears video about the rejection we got for a screenplay that i co-wrote called splatter day later changed to the killing club thank you very much